entrance and to thine. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, declare it to the distant lands. Behold, our Savior will come, you need no longer fear. Good morning. Special attention for this morning's Mass is for Audrey Simpson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have heard this sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed. Through my father, through my father, through my most famous son. Therefore, I ask the blessing of every great prayers, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, the grace of the angels of the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we await the advent of Christ, your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, the branch of the Lord will be luster and glory, and the fruit of the earth will be honor and splendor for the survivors of Israel. He who remains in Zion and he who is left in Jerusalem will be called holy, every one marked down for life in Jerusalem. When the Lord washes away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purges Jerusalem's blood from her midst with a blast of searing judgment, then will the Lord create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her place of assembly a smoking cloud by day and a light of flaming fire by night. For over all, the Lord's glory will be shelter and protection, shade from the parching heat of the day, refuse and cover from storm and rain. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it, the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your building. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Come and save us, Lord our God. Let your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, Many will come from the east and the west, and will recline with, Jake, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. A challenge and good news. This is what characterizes our readings today, and this is what characterizes our season of Advent. Throughout this season, we read from the book of the prophet Isaiah, as we do today. And today, we read the fourth, the beginning of the fourth chapter. Now, the fourth chapter uh, is thought by scholars to be an addition to the book of Isaiah, and it comes between uh, chapter three and five, no, no um, surprise there, but three and five are more ominous chapters, preaching about impending judgment, the challenge to the people to be ready for the coming of the Lord. But chapter 4, it offers more relief, a bit of a lighter tone. In fact, it offers more than relief. It offers hope. It offers hope to the Israelites that they, they will one day be God's people again. Isaiah writes that everyone who is left in Jerusalem at that time will be called holy, that the Lord will create a cloud by day to shelter them from the burning heat and from the storms, and a fire by night to enliven, enlighten their darkness. He says, for over all the Lord's glory will be shelter and protection, shade from the parching heat of the day, refuge and cover from storm and rain. Hope, a message of hope amid impending judgment. We also see a challenge and good news in our gospel passage today. Jesus enters Capernaum and a centurion comes to him asking him to heal his paralyzed, suffering servant. And Jesus immediately agrees. He says, I will come and cure him. And the centurion replies with faith in Jesus. He says, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you enter my roof. Only say the word, my servant shall be healed. His faith in Jesus' healing power is so great that he says, I know that you don't even have to come to the house that you can heal him from here. And when Jesus hears this, he says, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. This is the challenge. Jesus challenges his disciples to have the same great faith in his healing power. And then after that, he gives them the good news. He says that many will come from the east and from the west and recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says that whoever comes to him in great faith will be with him in paradise, in the heavenly kingdom. So what's our challenge and our good news today from these readings? Well, it's the challenge to have faith, faith that this Advent season will be different for each one of us, faith that Jesus can 
and will heal us in a profound way. Faith, that God will give us the courage to witness to others, that Advent is a time for us all to reorient ourselves, to look for the coming of Christ, that it's a time to rejoice in the hope that God comes in Jesus, a time to uh, counter the cultural noise that gets louder and louder every December, and a time for us to proclaim that Jesus is coming and to proclaim it with joy and hope. This, this is our challenge this Advent season. And when we accept it, when we preach the good news of Jesus, many will come from east and west to the banquet of the heavenly kingdom. That God may continue to guide the church and her mission to carry out the work of Jesus Christ on earth, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That God may inspire people of all nations to come to know the saving power of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That the Holy Spirit may grant faith as strong as the centurion to all who suffer and send them the healing they seek. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For protection from storms during this hurricane season, through the intercession of Our Lady of Ram Sekhar, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. And for those special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord oh God, we bring you these prayers and trust and confidence that you always hear and answer according to your love. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, with your goodness we have received the blood we offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, will become our spiritual strength. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design he formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all this at last may manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, Sheree, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints that please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you, dear Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not to share my mind, but only to say the word of God. Communion antidon. Come, O Lord, visit us in peace, that we may rejoice before you with a blameless heart.
Let us pray. May these mysteries of the Lord in which we have participated profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Say, Michael, you're not here. Amen. Amen. Amen.